So the, this week I did a lot of problems in chapter 6. That's really the main thing that I did. I started uh, reading two sections to finish off chapter 7 and I started reading uh, the first section of chapter 8 but just barely. I barely read a couple of pages and then I stopped and then I said it's time. It's time to do a lot of problems in chapter 6. So this has been the, the, uh, the week of uh, integration, which I love. I love integration. So I'll go briefly through the book, the parts that I've been working on. Um, <clears throat> I've also been doing in the background, I had to kick the, the, the tripod and the table. Uh, I've also been doing a lot of planning in the background. Uh, and I'll, I may do a video just about this topic because I find it a point of fascination and I've spent hours and hours, way longer than I should have, but I guess that's the uh, dilemma of the, the self-learner. Uh, planning where to go next. Do I do differential geometry? Do I do, do I go back to the basics, do linear algebra differential equations just so I can continue building my base? Uh, you could think, in theory, I should have done those before I did analysis. I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, I'll, I'll keep thinking about it as I finish this book. But by the time I finish this book, I have to have something else lined up. Let's see what happens. And so, yeah, it's been residue integrals all the way. Lots of fun. Lots of fun doing all these integrals. Uh, the examples in Seth and Snyder are fantastic. I have a bunch of other complex analysis books that I use to see a, for, for a different point of view. And I am totally blown away by Seth and Snyder. I don't understand why there is such a big difference in how much Saf and Snyder explain everything. And actually, I have a differential equations by Nagel, Saf, and Snyder. I think it's Nagel. But definitely Saf and Snyder are two of the authors. And I want to do some differential equations at some point. Maybe it could even be the next course that I do. Uh, I'm not sure yet. But even though I have two other great ODE books, now I'm like, okay, you guys are awesome. I got to do your next book at some point, and maybe soon. Uh, but yeah, I find that the examples, the way everything is explained is so good, so good. Uh, and I can continue to make progress, uh, work through integrals, I've worked through all these integrals. Uh, at least, you know, the, the first few, up to the point where I'm like, alright, I, I want to go and do more later, but I want to get going also. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I've, I've gotten as far as the end of section 6. For point six, uh, and that's what I was finishing up. Actually, I'm not. I'm not really done. What is it section? Yeah, section six point six. And so, once you get into powers of the x to the alpha, which can be uh, retold as uh, e to the uh, <coughs> e to the alpha log x, uh, things get a little more complicated. And so I've been working through those. Uh, but I think this is more of a next week thing. Uh, and also, I think it may not be that I do an update next week. <clears throat> because I'm also going to show here in this video all of Chapter 7 reading. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I want to wait till I finish all of Chapter 8 reading to make a video about that. And so I, I may not uh, make an update next week. Uh, so yeah, I've read all of Chapter 7. I'll just show it in the book. And then show it in the notes. All about conformal mapping. The whole concept of preserving angles. When you map from one plane to the other, do you preserve the angles? Okay, That's, that's really conformal mapping. Uh, told by somebody who doesn't know anything about conformal mapping. Um, yeah, Mobius, Mobius Transformations. Great reading. I'm looking forward to doing problems. Uh, of course, there are some... Mobius stuff in number theory that I have forgotten by now. Um, yeah, two sections of Mobius transformations. Really cool stuff that I want to get into, do some problems. Again, even though uh, reading is fun and it's very relaxing and it's very passive uh, and I can do it forever, I gotta do problems. I gotta just bust my head with problems and that's what I have been doing all of this week. So I've read uh, Shores Chores, uh, Christoffel transformations. Uh, there's also an appendix for it. I started reading it, but I didn't really 
uh, go into it in detail. It's not not my thing. Just wanted to get a general feel, but I didn't read the whole thing. Uh, yeah, so that's the book. <clears throat> then when it comes to problems, yes, this has been the week of uh, chapter six problems. And I've been doing pretty well on them. Now, the way Saffron Snyder did it <clears throat> with some of the later ones is they tell you what the answer should be. And so I like that. I mean, I like that because I'm working towards the answer and I've actually learned where I'm going wrong. And this is why I end up getting it because I know what, what, what it needs to be at the end of the day. Um, so that's actually helped. That, that has helped a lot. So of course I'm getting I'm getting them all right because I know the answer to begin with, and then when I do the calculations, I know if I'm off by a factor, then I did something wrong, or if I'm off completely. Uh, there was one problem which I really liked. Problem seven here uh, breaks out into the four roots of uh, z to the fourth plus one, but they're all squared. So when you put it in the residue, you have to actually do the derivative of the thing. It becomes very complicated. But then at, at some point I came across the, you know, I realized, hey, why don't I just do, uh, calculate z minus the, the z's, calculate them separately, and just write them out as z's without the i plus 1 over square root of 2 everywhere. And I did that, I restarted it, because I, I got going and I knew I was getting close, but I was like, a mess, uh, and so finally I got it. I got it nice and clean. Um, so yeah, this, these sections have been, it's really helpful to, to know what you're working towards. And in some cases, I mistakenly uh, <laughs> think that I've done it, but actually there's, there's no answer in the back for that problem. <clears throat> I made the same mistake here. Got really close, messed up a minus sign. There have been a couple of times where I've been off by a factor. Uh, that really started to happen towards the very end, uh, towards the very end in section 6.6. .6. That's where um, it got a little more difficult. Uh, but there you are. That's my progress so far, but also I almost forgot to show that I have read chapter 7. I started a new notebook. So it'll be, the notebooks will be 1 to 4, because 1 to 3 is about the same size as 4, 5, 6 is the second notebook, and then 7, 8 is this notebook, and uh, I plan to go back, I always say that I do and then I don't, and do a review of all chapters. I think I want to do that. I think I want to do that. I may change my mind at the last minute, but uh, this is just the notes that I made as I uh, read uh, this chapter. all about uh, conformal mapping. And, uh, I like to show my notes just because, you know, maybe somebody likes looking at them, how I write them. Maybe uh, you want to uh, write uh, neat notes. I, don't, I think the fact that I use uh, grid paper actually helps a lot. Uh, but yeah, I, I like to write notes cleanly, numbered, all that good stuff. The application sections at the end of chapter 7, I have to say, um, everything having to, having to do with harmonic uh, functions and everything having to do with applications in Saf and Snyder, uh, they did it for a reason and I like it, but there's always something that's a little missing and um, it feels a little contrived. I know that they didn't want to write a 900 page book uh, and so I have to say that I wish this these sections, the section 7.6 .6 and 7.7, .7, have been done differently because Saffron Snyder will pull out, okay the mapping is, boom, and you're like alright I guess that's the answer but I know what I think I know why they're doing it is because if they actually went through and derived it, that would be like another five or seven pages, five, six, seven pages. Uh, so yeah, and then I found these great uh, complex analysis questions. I forget what university these came out of. And I'm gonna put these here 
uh, in case I have time to go research them uh, because I think I'm going to learn something just by going and trying to try to try to answer some of these uh, state improved Schwartz reflection. I know that that's uh, in one of the problems. It's actually not in the content of the book. Uh, yeah, harmonic functions. Uh, the Riemann mapping theorem. I do have a book that was suggested by Saffensteiner. I bought it. Uh, I didn't end up using it that much, but I do have it, and I may want to go. Uh, and I also may want to learn about Riemann surfaces at some point, now that I'm getting towards the end of this course.